Hi everybody, uh, my name is uh, Tony Bonner and I'm a third year PhD student working at the Institut d'Astrophysique Spatiale in Orsay in France and uh, I would like to thank the organizer for giving me the opportunity to talk about my work on the extraction of principal graph uh, from the galaxy distribution to model the filamentary pattern of the universe. So first let me introduce a bit of uh, cosmological context and what is the cosmic web. And in cosmology we assume that the initial density fluctuations are Gaussianly distributed and homogeneous with some small spherical perturbations that are evolved through time and gravity to the structures that are observed today. In, for instance, the large sky galaxy surveys like uh, Sloan Digital Sky Survey here, or in numerical simulations like in the Illustris simulation there, for instance. Uh, and uh, this spatial arrangement of the matter today is called the cosmic web and we identify four types of structures in it depending on the contraction of the spherical perturb initial spherical perturbation. Um, we have for instance clusters that are very massive nodes and cores of the cosmic web that are linked together by uh, bridges of matter uh, that we call filaments that are found at the intersection between um, walls, between um, planar region of matter that we call sheets or walls, and that themselves are at the uh, described the shells of large and very uh, under dense empty areas that we call voids here, for instance. And in this talk, we'll mainly focus on the filament objects since they are very interesting from a cosmological point of view because they contain the largest fraction of the mass of the full universe for a very small part of the volume, almost uh, only 6% of the uh, volume fraction for almost 50% uh, of the mass fraction. And they, uh, recently, they have also been shown to host a large part of the baryons in the form of hot and diffuse gas that you can observe, for instance, in the uh, SZ map. Sonia Zeldovich maps of the Planck survey. Uh, here you have two uh, uh, clusters that are uh, linked together by an overdense uh, signal of uh, SZ. Uh, it has been observed so in simulations but also in uh, observations. And uh, identifying filaments through galaxies is interesting to uh, then study their physical properties in other observables like in SD here but also in X-rays or lensing etc. And it's also uh, very interesting to uh, understand the complex interplay between uh, large-scale environments and the formation and evolution of, of galaxies since we expect uh, different characteristics for galaxies if they lived uh, in different um, environments such as filaments, walls, nodes etc. So in this work, we are trying to model the filamentary pattern as a principal graph that is an extension of principal curves that have been introduced in um, 1985 by Asti and Sutzel uh, with a pretty simple definition that is just the curve that is passing in the middle of a point cloud distribution. So if you imagine that black dots are galaxies, then the principal curve is just the, galaxy, uh, the, the line that is passing in its middle here. It's an extension of uh, principal components to local and nonlinear uh, components. And uh, principal graph, so graph, have been introduced in this context uh, to alleviate some of the drawbacks of the curve formulation. So here in this work, we are just assuming that the underlying uh, filamentary pattern can be modeled as a one-dimensional manifold that we modeled itself as a graph structure whose nodes are actually uh, Gaussian clusters paving the distribution, the galaxy distribution in its middle and uh, linked together by a graph structure. But let's start with the, with the nodes. So this is what we call a mixture model. We assume that the galaxy distribution can be paved by a set of k Gaussian components uh, here for instance and with an additional uniform background uh, to take into account points that are not part of the pattern like out outliers like galaxies standing in walls or voids for instance that are not uh, represented by the graph structure. And the probability of finding a galaxy at position xi can be obtained by the summation of all the k uh, Gaussian clusters with their own amplitudes plus the uniform uh, background comp component with its uh, amplitude too. And the uh, um, parameters of the model are just the set of all amplitudes plus the um, positions of the Gaussian clusters plus their uh, covariances. And in what follows, we will only focus on spherical Gaussian clusters, hence assuming that we pave the distribution with uh, Gaussian spheres and um, we do not have all the terms in the um, 
in the in the covariances. Um, and the, the the graph the graph nodes so the Gaussian clusters are linked together by a given uh, prior graph structures that acts like a regularization term or a prior as you wish on the parameter space so more precisely on the mu on the center position of the Gaussian clusters hence constraining the solution that we have to constrain its smoothness more more precisely so this is the um, uh, Gaussian distribution that is used uh, as, as, the, as, the, as a prior with lambda mu being the precision of the distribution and here you recognize something that is very similar to the usual uh, L2 norm that is used uh, in statistics or in machine learning to constrain the smoothness of an estimate but not directly on the Euclidean space but on the graph structure thanks to this uh, term here that is the um, adjacency matrix that fully encodes the graph information and that takes value 1 if i and g are connected and 0 otherwise. So this is the usual L2 norm but on the graph structure itself constraining the smoothness of the graph basically. And we also add additional um, um, regularization terms to take into account uh, some other IDs, for instance the spatial coherence of the variance, because even though each uh, Gaussian cluster uh, is spherical, they also have their own uh, value of the variance and we want locally to have a certain coherence uh, between the, the variances. For instance, a node that is here should not have a, a variance that is very uh, different from its direct neighbors. And this is exactly what we do here using an inverse gamma prior distribution on the, on the variances because it is the conjugate prior for the Gaussian likelihood for this parameter with a mode of the uh, distribution that is at the uh, average of uh, the variance of its direct neighbor. So we are just saying that a given node should not have a very different uh, variance from the mean of its uh, direct neighbor. And we also add uh, an additional uh, prior on the amplitude to avoid singular solutions to happen uh, centered at the uniform um, uniform uh, distribution for the amplitudes. And the full prior distribution on the parameter space, theta, is obtained by just the summation of the regularize, uh, regularization term or prior distributions of all uh, individual, uh, for all individual, individual parameters. And this is, this builds up uh, the idea of the regularized mixture model here. And uh, to find the optimal values of the parameters, uh, theta, uh, we use the expectation maximization pr uh, procedure to maximize the log posterior, that is just the sum of the log likelihood and the log prior that we've just uh, wrote before. And basically it leads you to minimize such a cost function like that with different terms. Uh, the first one that is interesting here is the data fidelity term, how much you want your representation, so your graph in our case, to be close to the data you've observed with some fuzziness introduced by the variances and a weight that is uh, the probabilistic association of a data point to a given Gaussian or to the background component. And the other term is how much you want your graph to be smooth and to be short, basically. This is the topological prior given by the graph structure, the prior uh, distribution on the uh, mu parameter. And the trade-off between the two is controlled by the regularization parameter, the precision of the uh, prior distribution, uh, lambda mu. And uh, expectation maximization algorithm with the previously uh, introduced um, prior distributions lead you to uh, this, this kind of uh, uh, update equations, analytical update equations, which is convenient. So you can update it uh, iteratively and converge to uh, some uh, local maximum of the log posterior for the parameters. So basically the, I, the full idea of the optimization scheme is just you start with a graph with some nodes that are Gaussian clusters and you want these clusters to pave the galaxy distribution, the point cloud distribution more generally but uh, keeping some idea of smoothness of the graph introduced by this term, for instance, with some robustness to outliers of the pattern introduced by the uniform background component. So this is the full idea of the optimization scheme. And um, one point is that uh, you have to link together the Gaussian clusters 
because as I said, it is a prior, distri uh, prior distribution and you have to uh, build up and choose a graph construction um, to link your points. And uh, in our work, we have been using the minimum spanning tree because it has a very long history in cosmology and it has some um, um, uh, interesting uh, features from a mathematical point of view. It associates to a given set of data points a unique uh, graph with no parameter and is scale free, minimizing the total Euc Euclidean distance to reach all of them. So, for instance, here you have a galaxy distribution from the illustrious TNG simulation, and here you have the corresponding minimum spanning tree, and you can see that. Uh, locally, uh, it is very spiky and it does not really reveal the local geometry of the underlying um, manifold that generated the data. And people have been using it in cosmology and define, for instance, filaments as branches of the graph. And here, this is the version that uh, you obtain using the regularized mixture model that I have just presented, that we entitled a T-Rex for tree-based ridge extractor. And here you see that you obtain something that is very uh, much smoother, uh, but uh, and representing the local geometry of the data very uh, much uh, accurately. So it leads to a smoother version of the minimum spanning tree, but you can keep the same uh, definition for it. You can also extend it to uh, take into account cycles that are in the data, for instance, here, using random subsampling of the data. And you can also have a description of the local size, so local width of the filament using the variances that are learned during the process. And another feature that is interesting using the uh, regularized minimum spanning, um, regularized mixture model, sorry, uh, is that you can uh, classify each galaxy, uh, new ones or the ones that are used in the process, in the learning, uh, you can classify them uh, as belonging to a given filament or to a given uh, Gaussian clusters, for instance using the probabilistic assignation that we have seen just before and finding uh, the, the, the component that most probably uh, generated a given data point. And if you have a definition for filaments, like here, for instance, the branches, then you can uh, identify um, galaxies that are uh, uh, more probably associated to a given filament or to another one. Here, for instance, this is a toy data set with very heterosedastic pattern with three uh, branches at different variances and 20% added background noise. And you see that we retrieve uh, well the, 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 the attribution of data points to the different uh, filaments. Here, this is the same on the illustrious TNG slice. And here, this is the um, uh, galaxy di uh, mass galaxy distribution of uh, the different um, uh, galaxies in the Eagle simulation for different environments that we define nodes, for instance, as the bifurcation in the graph, where you have the most massive ones, uh, filaments that are those that are in the uh, near the uh, the ridge that we identify, and uh, voids or walls that are those standing in the uh, uniform background distribution. And you see that there is a hierarchy of uh, mass in the different environments in the 3D uh, graph that we obtain. So this is how you do physics with uh, the output of the graph, for instance. And the other thing that we have been in, uh, investigating with a postdoc at the lab at the Institute of Spatial with uh, Céline Guin, uh, who is very interested in uh, the outskirts local environment around clusters and how they connect to the cosmic web, is this relation between the connectivity, so the number of filaments that are that a given halo or given node is connected to in the cosmic web, for instance, here it would be th three, and uh, its mass. And we see that uh, the, the, the most massive nodes are more connected to the cosmic web. And we have been uh, pushing further this relation and looking at different assembly history of halos. And we see, for instance, in red here, that relaxed halos are mostly formed long time ago and slowly accreting matter through the uh, cosmic web uh, here. And for instance, in blue, you see that uh, the halo that have uh, been formed uh, recently are dynamically uh, unrelaxed today because uh, they uh, should still be in formation phase and um, accreting matter through the different filaments. So this is something that we've been uh, investigating and uh, that will be um, released uh, soon uh, in 2021. 20, uh, 
So in conclusion, we have been introducing a new way to characterize the uh, filamentary pattern of the cosmic wave using a regularized version of the mixture model with a graph prior, and we have seen that it has some appealing properties such as uh, it can handle heterosedastic pattern and give an idea of the local size of the features. It can also classify galaxies as belonging to the filamentary pattern or to individual filaments or to the background, for instance. And you can also use the output of the graph to do some physics with the bifurcations of it uh, and identify nodes of the cosmic web and look at the connectivity, etc., like we've been doing. And some uh, things I would like to do to push uh, further with that is to study the individual, char individual characteristics of filaments and have a look at how they connect with the properties of galaxies, for instance. So, um, yeah, if you have questions or suggestions, then just let me know uh, or ask me and I will be glad to answer.